Hey, look, I'm alive. <laughs> yeah, I am. I know it's been months since I've done anything. Uh, there's a few reasons behind that. Uh, number one is the games are actually starting to outstrip my computer. I've upgraded this old girl as far as I can. Um, I could put better graphics cards in it, but the processor can only take so much. Um, uh, Andromeda, which I wanted to record, th there'd be no way. There'd be no way I could do it. No way. Um, my computer struggles to play it with lower settings already. Um, Tom Clancy's The Division is another one that just... Nah, can't really do it anymore. It can't. So, it really doesn't matter. Um, um, I don't know how much longer I'll be able to record anything if I decide if I even want to. Um, before... Um, I need to replace it, and I may not be able to until next year when I get um, my tax refund. Yes, I get. Uh, that's another change. There's been a lot of changes. This is going to be a long vlog. Um, that's what this channel may become. It may become a vlog channel. I may start doing something like uh, Boogie Two Nine Eight Eight, where I talk more than anything else. Uh, Maybe I talk on subjects that are happening around the world, or movies, or stuff. Just something to get out there and do things. Um, so anyways. Um, let's start from the beginning. As first off, as you can probably see behind me, things have changed. That bar you see right there is a lamp. I need to put a couple of bulbs in it. I've got one here. I want to put the other one over here if I can fit it, because it's really tall, and there's a, there's a slant in the ceiling right here. I'm in a loft. Um, no longer live at Wareham. That place was terrible to begin with. Uh, I didn't like a lot of the stuff that was going on there. Uh, it ended up getting in fights with the landlord uh, over and over and over. Um, he tried to have me thrown out, but because I'm a PCA, I can't. Uh, he tried to do a lot of lying and a lot of other bullshit, and none of it worked. Um, it, things just fell apart. My mother and I ended up having to do almost basically an emergency move. And we ended up losing and leaving a lot of stuff behind, which was really bad. Um, the moving company we hired, although they were decent workers, uh, they packed things up real quick. First off, they came with a truck that was too small. And, um, that was, uh, I'll explain what that was. You heard that pop. That was a message coming up for me on my SMS, which I used to type on my computer to message through my phone. Um, they were decent workers. They packed really fast. They got their truck loaded really good. But had I not rented a truck myself, um, as well, that we would have left a lot more behind because their truck just filled up. They didn't come with a big enough truck. All right. My truck was actually bigger. Uh, and they had to use a bit of my truck that I rented to load up, which was really... I mean, that was lucky I rented a truck. Now, why did I rent a truck? Well, I didn't have a car. No, I didn't have a car at all. So the only way to get my mother and myself from Wareham to where we are now, which is in Plainville, Massachusetts. If you want to know where that is, um, I could probably throw a rock into Rhode Island from where we live. Where we live now. So, yeah. Um, anyways. Um, yeah, it was a terrible place. The move was really bad. We finally got into where we are now, which is uh, Plainville in Massachusetts. Um, I have commandeered the loft upstairs. My mom has the master bedroom. There is a second bedroom, but it's really, really tiny. I would never survive in there. It's too small. Too small. Um, so I'm up here in the loft, which technically is a lot bigger, but not really. But it's better than being downstairs. So, yeah, I know. Shiny forehead. <laughs> 
next to the light. But, um, yeah, things just went really bad. The, the, the place in Wareham, it was, it was a slum. It was a dump. It really was. It was a decent, you know, it was a higher end slum, but it was still a slum. And it was run by a slum lord. So, yeah. They said that, you know, they tried to blame me for everything that was happening. And in a way, they were right. A lot of stuff happened because I was there because I was not going to be a silent party and have my mother living in a place that was falling apart. We're talking black mold around the windows. We're talking a collapsing kitchen floor, a collapsing bathroom floor, a leaking bathroom ceiling. Just all kinds of things that were just wrong with that place. The closet had a huge hole in the wall, which led to the laundry room. The laundry room had a huge hole in the wall that led outside. Now imagine what that was like in the winter time. Yeah, it wasn't happening. So my mother and I, we got out of there and we moved here. The landlord we have is really nice. The place is really good. It, it's probably the best place we've ever lived in ever since I had rented, you know, had been with my mother since I was up to 19 and when I moved back with her now. Um, it means, uh, it means a, a lot to be here. Yeah, there are problems here, but they're minor things that can be dealt with. You know, uh, the bathroom doesn't always turn off properly when you turn the faucet off. It likes to leak a lot, so you have to turn it on, turn it off, turn it on, turn it off, and it'll stop. Um, there's no sprayer on the sink. Well, there is, but it's not there. Um, there's just all these little things that are wrong. The lady was trying to sell the house, but she wasn't getting what she wanted for it. She wanted $230,000 for her home. Um, uh, just a minute. Um, I'll explain that. Again, I'll explain that. Yeah, I don't even know if I'll be able to continue this recording uh, right now. I may end up stopping it redoing it after uh, that person goes to sleep so yeah um, just a bunch of little stuff that's wrong can be dealt with but she was never going to get two hundred thirty thousand dollars for it um, I keep pushing the wrong buttons um, there's, there's too many little things that are wrong with the house that, that can constitute getting $230,000. It doesn't matter if you have a fire pit in the back and a little deck in the back and whatnot. The yard's too small. There's too many things wrong with the house that could constitute um, it being worth $230,000. It's a really nice house, but it needs things fixed up, like the bathroom, like the kitchens. Uh, windows really need screens in them. Most of the windows don't have screens in them. Um, the water heater tends to run out of hot water really quick for its size. Yes, there is oil heating here, but the house is, uh, well, first off, the, the, the house is drafty. Um, there's quite a few drafts around here, despite it being a nice, not too old house. The paint job in the house really isn't that great. You can tell it was painted by non-professionals. Um, there's also the fact that the house is small. It is small. It has a huge master bedroom. The master bedroom is the biggest room in the house. There's a dining room and living room uh, and a kitchen. And then there's the loft and the small bedroom and the bathroom. It's actually kind of a small house, you know? Um, and it's a, it's a small yard as well. It's a very small yard. Uh, it has a lot of nice stuff, but it, it's, it, I, even I can see it's not worth what she was asking. So she decided to rent it, and it's eighteen fifty a month, which the majority of which is paid for. Uh, so there's a lot more gray getting in my beard, huh? It used to be just like down here, now it's all up in here as well. Um, so we're lucky, we're very lucky to get this place, extremely lucky to get this place. Um, ever since I've got here, I've been doing a bit better on my weight. Uh, I've gone from 465, uh, uh, 
to four. I, I've been struggling between 443 and 445. I haven't really been able to get under 443. I think I got to 442 point something for a little while, but I've been struggling around there. So this coming Friday, I'm going to try and go to a gym known as Anytime Fitness. Um, you can literally go there any time of the day. You get a key, and you can go there and work out any time of the day. So I could go at midnight if I want to and work out, which I really like. Um, I like the idea of that. Maybe I can get myself on some uh, bikes or you know something. Preferably not a treadmill. I've been having a lot of issues with my knees lately. Uh, not even a month after moving here, I was out walking in Attleboro. Um, I was going to get some medicine for my knee because it hurt really bad and something in my right knee popped. I was standing out on Route 1, Massachusetts. Um, tons of traffic, tons of traffic. Busy road. And I was trying to cross the street and I heard my knee pop. I heard it over all the traffic. It was incredibly loud. I just couldn't walk on it at that point. I actually had to flag a car down and beg them to run me up to the Target where I was going, where there was a CVS, uh, to get my medicine, and then I called an Uber to take me home. And, oh my God, I just could not walk. I, I couldn't walk. And I think what happened is, and I haven't, have, I haven't been able to have a diagnosis that I tore my ACL tendon. Um, I need to call and try and get into... Um, see some kind of a specialist about my knee and see if I can something be done about it because um, every time I stand up and walk it's in a lot of pain and I put so much um, work into you know protecting my right knee that now I've hurt my left knee so I tend to suffer a lot uh, while walking a lot more than normal um, See, although walking's not so much of an issue anymore, I finally got a vehicle after uh, I saved up about fifteen hundred dollars to put a down payment on one, and it was an adventure and a half. It started out with me actually going for a two thousand and five Lincoln Navigator, beautiful shape SUV. Not, you know, very everything that was wrong with it was cosmetic, and that even then it was very little. It, it, you turn the key and it, boom, stop right up, no problem. Uh, was in great shape inside now. Uh, but apparently the dealer was letting his family drive the car, drive the Navigator back and forth. And I guess the daughter wanted to use it one more time before they lost it, so he decided to let her use it two days. <coughs> Excuse me. Something in my throat. Two days before... Um, two days before... I was to get it, and she totaled it. Yeah, who the hell lets a family member, lets anyone, drive a vehicle you have a committed buyer on? You're putting miles on it for number one, and you're you're putting wear and tear on it number two, and then you're risking exactly what happened number three. So then what was supposed to happen is he said, you know what, I'll look, I'll make you a deal. I know you're interested in that Silverado out there, but it was just a little too much for it. It was actually $2,000 more than the Navigator. It was a 2005 Chevy Silverado with a big crew cab. Short bed. You know, it wasn't the six foot bed. It was like a five or four or whatever. I don't know. It wasn't uber long. It was just a nice big truck. And I always wanted a full size pickup. Ever since I was a little kid, I wanted a full size pickup. This is my chance to own one. He knocked two grand off the price. Brought the truck down to the same level as the uh, navigator and everything was working out great everything was going to be fine until he fucked up the paperwork I was only going to have to put down $400 on the Silverado nope he fucked up the paperwork and not once but twice and so the lender rejected it and so to make sure he didn't fuck up the paperwork again he had me me sit down at his computer and put in the paperwork for the Silverado for a different lender and they just turned us down. The other lender was willing, but he fucked up the paperwork. And so, was, so I lost my chance at that. Lost my chance at the Silverado, and the Navigator was totaled. I said, you know what, bro? I'm done. I'm out. I'm not going to do this. I went to another dealership. Had a dealer that said they were... Um, had me pre-approved on a... Uh, 
Escalade. So what I was trying to do is trying to get a full size SUV or truck. I wanted something big for once. I've been driving small cars all my life. And even if I wasn't big like I am not right now, I don't I, even even my Scion. It was a really cool little SUV, but it was little. You know? I wanted something big. And I don't know what happened with this dealer was like, I don't you know, I'm worried we're gonna have problems with this escalade. And I turned to him and I said, But you said you had me pre approved for this escalade. I put in my information on your website for it for a loan and you said I was pre approved. And he he was he was gonna and he was kinda hemming and hawing. I was like, you know what? I looked at him and said, Look, I may want a full size SUV, but I'll take a mid size one if I have to. I said, JB Byrider, just up the street from you. Um, and I, it was literal walking distance. I said, not only will pre approve me, but they have their own bank. They'll finance me straight through them. So I'll have no problems getting a vehicle through there. Even though I want a full size SUV, they had just got a Chrysler 300. And I love the Chrysler 300. It's a beautiful fucking car. And I was going to go get that. He said, well, you know what? He said, look. I said, he said, why don't you do, why don't you just try this? I have a 2008 GMC Envoy outside. Why don't you just come and take a look at it? If you like it, we can set you up with it. So I was like, eh, fine, I'll just look. Went out to look at the Envoy, and I was like, you know what, it's not bad. It's not as big as a Suburban or Yukon, or even a Navigator, one of the full-size Navigators or Escalation, one of the big ones. But it, it, was, it, it was big. It might as well be a full-size SUV, it's just a little bit smaller. And it didn't have a V8, it has an inline six, but it has a big inline six, 4.6 liter inline six. So it's a big motor. And it only seats five, because there's no extended version of the Envoy anymore, so. But I don't need seating for eight people. It's just me and my mother. I just want the cargo space. Really, I just really want the cargo space. You know, in case I end up having to haul medical stuff for my mother or, or whatever, I need the room to haul stuff. And so, I was like, you know what, let's take it for a test drive. I got in, test drove it, and I love the ride. The ride was great. This is a top of the line Envoy. I believe it's known as the SLT, which I think is a super luxury touring or something like that, supreme luxury touring. Um, it's it's got near the works for its year. You know, it's got the power seats, power window, and the power seats is all power. There's, there's no lever to put the seat back. It's power back. Uh, it has memory seat, you know, somebody gets in, drives it, adjusts it, I can just push a button and it'll adjust it right back to my position. Uh, adjustable pedals, all the dials on the steering wheel, complete digital readout. If you're hearing sounds, I have Skype up in the background, and I'm, I'm, I'm getting to that. I'm going to explain that. Uh, but there's all kinds of stuff going on. And more Skype stuff. Um, it has a CD player. Unfortunately, it doesn't have Bluetooth, which is the one thing I miss on my Scion. I miss being able to just hook my my phone up to my speak to the radio and just playing off my phone. You know, I miss that. Settle down, Shay. Settle down. He's not getting nightmares. Clack, clack. Why are you pushing buttons on your keyboard? You're supposed to be asleep, buddy. He can't hear me. My microphone's muted on Skype. Um, but it, it's a beautiful, beautiful SUV, but there was some stuff wrong with it. There was some clacking in the wheel, and I could hear the brakes rubbing in the front front left, and it shouldn't have. So the, the dealer said, don't worry about it, we'll take care of it. When you drive it out of here, it'll be in perfect shape. Said, All right, I'll give you a chance. I was nervous. I was nervous for a while, because I didn't hear from him, and he didn't send it when he was supposed to. And I was getting upset, because I had put nearly a 1,000 down. And I was to give him the other 500 after I went to pick it up. 
Uh, so I've committed a lot of money to this already. And uh, he did eventually get it fixed, not as soon as I wanted. Um, then he called me up and he said, well, the pinging's fixed, but there's another problem. I said, well, now what? He says, well, my, my guy says you're going to need brakes within 5,000 miles. So if you leave it with us for, for one more day, we'll get the brakes done on it. Now, I have to give the dealer credit here. He never had to tell me about the brakes. I could have just driven this thing out of there, and he, if I'm rocking a lot, it's because my monitor's like not on a stable spot. Um, he didn't have to tell me about the brakes. I would have never known, and the next thing I know, my brake lights would have come on after 5,000 miles, and it would have been far too late to do anything to the dealer. But not only did he tell me, but he got the brakes done, and not just done, all the way around. The rotor's done, new pads, everything. Just all new brakes all the way around. So I get new brakes on my Envoy. I got everything in great shape. I'm really happy with the vehicle. Okay, it's not the best fuel mileage in the world. It gets like 15 in town and 20, maybe 22 on the highway. <laughs> it's not great, but I don't care. I can afford it right now. Hopefully I'll be able to continue to afford it for at least the next three years. Because that's how long my loan's for, three years. Um, but what can I say? It's a beautiful silver SUV that is the lap of luxury. Dual climate control, sunroof, the whole thing. It's just an awesome vehicle and I'm in love with it. It's a nice big vehicle. Which is what I want. It's not exactly what I wanted, but it's close enough. Especially considering that my credit was tanked after I moved from Hawaii. I had to tank it to get here. And I still have the Scion against my name. The Scion's not paid for. And it's not going to be paid for until sometime after September or October or whatever. It's not going to be signed. It's not going to be done. So, yeah, there's that. Uh, but otherwise... I do have an SUV now, I do have a vehicle, so I can get around on my own and haul on my own. And I have taken it for a couple of good drives. I've taken it out to uh, Watertown, which is about an hour away. I've taken it to Carver, which is an hour away from where we live. And it's, it's handled well. The only thing is, is once the airflow through the front of the vehicle hits 80 miles per hour, I don't go into a time warp, fortunately. <laughs> That's 88. Once the wind speed through the grill gets to 80 miles an hour, something in the dash starts to whistle and vibrate really annoying me. And it really pisses me off. I want to find out what it is, but I don't know if I can. And I just really hate it. But other than that, you don't need to go 80 miles an hour. The reason, only reason it happened is because... Um, I was going about 70, 75 with the flow of traffic, and I started getting a headwind. And that wind started something going on, and I kind of decided to test this on the way home when I had the wind at my tail. I just kept upping the speed, and as soon as I hit 80, that's when it started. So, yeah, that was not a lot of fun to find out, but I don't get on the highway that much anyways, and even if I do, I'm not going to be going 80 miles an hour very often. Not that monster. Uh, so, to explain the messages and stuff we're getting, I am in a relationship, so to speak. It's the digital world. Um, I met my wife from Hawaii online, 15, no, actually, said we're going on 17 years. It's been, seven, yeah, 17 years. It's been 17 years. Uh, even though she's passed away, the point is, is I met her online 17 years ago when online dating was in its infancy, really. Um, now, I did not meet this online dating. This is a friend I met through Second Life, and it gets complicated. It's going to get complicated. I don't know if I've explained this before. But um, my friend, who I ended up deciding to take as a mate online in, a certain, in, a, in Second Life, has translated in a, in a way to outside. Not only is this friend of mine somebody I consider a mate, but he, he, and it is a he, is also my pet. Now, it started out as Second Life, but he now has, for the past few months, an actual collar 
or his neck with my name, not my actual name, but my second life name uh, across the throat. It says Zochi, Z-O-C-H-I. Actually, Zochi, there's an S in the end. Z-O-C-H-I-S on the throat. Uh, it's typical black and red because those are his favorite colors. Uh, with red stitching, leather, lambskin uh, in, you know, inside, beautiful color. And he wears it pretty often. But it doesn't end there. Through him, I met these two girls that were kind of his mates outside of Second Life. While he, while he was being my mate in Second Life, Second Life is a world where you're supposed to be able to go and get away from real life. So. And I started meeting and get to know these girls. And somehow the four of us ended up forming a bonding relationship. So now the four of us are kind of in a polyamorous relationship where we belong to each other. The only thing that bothers me about this relationship is this. And I'm the only one that has an issue with it. My pet is not quite 30. It's not a big deal. Okay, I'm 43. 13 years older. But he is in his 30s. The two girls, one just turned 21 this month, and one turned 22 not long ago. Yeah. When I hit 44 on my next birthday coming in June, I am twice the age of both of them. Now, if a 40-something-year-old woman hits on an 18, 19, 20-year-old guy, she's a cougar. And the guy is lucky. If a 40-something, even 50-something-year-old man hits on an 18, 19, 20, 21-year-old girl, he's a lech. He's just out for a body. Not that the cougar's not out for something like that either, but there's double standards, and sometimes the man ends up on the short end of the stick. And that's where this is. Now, the one who's older, I'm just going to say my little fen fen. I'm not going to say they're, I'm not even going to say they're in their, their, uh, second life names. I'm just going to use the nicknames that I use for my little fen fen. Uh, my little squishy, as I also call her, just because she likes squishy, you know, the stress ball things and all that. So I call her squishy. Because <laughs> her obsessed, she's obsessed with her, seriously. Um, I don't have so much of a problem with her. She's very much in command of her life, despite her age. And she, um, she will literally just tell her grandmother who she lives with or, or whatever, hey, this is my choice. I'm 22. I know I'm young, but I'm still, it's my choice to make. And if you don't like it, too bad. The other one, uh, my kitty. Um, her parents are a little more protective, and she does live with her parents. So if they were to know that she's involved with a multi-person relationship bad enough, one of them being my age, yeah, that's I wouldn't go over so well. It, it really wouldn't. But that's where I am. I am in a relationship with three other people. And it's not because there's three other people I'm in a relationship with that I am about as happy as I've ever been. My life's in a good spot right now, and it's going to remain here for a while, I hope. You know, the morbid part of my fortune right now is it all relies on how long my mother stays alive. Because as soon as my mother passes away, my money as a personal care t uh, attendant, I get paid for taking care of her. Fourteen, twelve an hour. Thirty-eight and a half hours a week is what I get paid. I get $830 every two weeks. That's a lot of money. But when she's gone, that money is gone. 
and I would ha I might have to actually go out and get a job again and that's going to be really really tough so I need to get my ass back in shape I need to lose some weight I need to get down to 300 pounds minimum again somewhere in the in the mid to low 300s again I have to you know, like I said, that's kind of the morbid part of it. My fortune relies on how long my mother's alive. But that aside, um, uh, I, my life's in a good spot right now. I'm making plenty of money. I got a vehicle again. It's not as young uh, as my, and it's got 150,000 miles on it compared to my Scion when I bought it. That had 17, 16 actually. 16 something. It had 16 something thousand miles. This is got 150,000. But it doesn't run like it has 150,000 miles on it. Uh, it's maybe not as young, but it's every bit as nice. It has its little quirks. It's like the gas uh, cover is held with a bungee cord. Held closed with a bungee cord. <laughs> One of the window defroster wires in the back is broken off. It's not a big deal to me. It's really not. But it's just, it's a couple small things. But otherwise, it's in every bit of great shape as the Scion. I, I absolutely love this thing. So, that aside, I have my SUV. I'm in a nice house, finally. I'm getting paid well. And I have three people who love me. I have my femboy, and he's a femboy. And I have two girls. And I love them. We don't know where this world's going to take us, but the way I feel already, in particular about a couple of them, uh, I love all three of them, but I don't want to go into too much detail about it. I know that I'm closer to one in particular than I am the other two. And that's how things are. That's just how things are. I don't care what kind of polyamorous relationship you're in, there's always going to be a stronger connection somewhere than the rest. As long as you don't let that stronger connection override keeping everything fair. Everyone gets to spend equal time together. You know, we all have our group days, which is the majority of the week, and then one day I get to spend with one person, one day I get to spend with another person, one day I get to spend with a third person. And whatever person I'm not spending time with on that day uh, gets to support whatever two are not spending time with me on that day. So if I'm spending time with my femboy, then the two girls spend time together. If I'm not spending time with one, if I'm not spending time with one girl and my fanboy, they get to spend time together while I'm with the other girl. You know, that's how it works. And we do that three days a week. You know, I get to be with one, I get to be with one girl, fanboy, then the other one. And that's where I am. And it, 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 my life has been an adventure, and other than my weight, I, I don't think I can be unhappy with the majority of it. I had a hard time growing up. I went through a lot of bullshit in my life. People using and abusing my kindness and everything else. You know, I've been in and out of mental institutions for breakdowns and evaluations. I suffered a lot of shit. I've been in jail for some of the stuff I've done. And through it all, through every last little bit of it, I just kept going forward, and maybe, maybe life's finally given me a little bit of a break. Maybe I've, I've finally done enough things right to deserve something. I don't know. But if I had to go through it all again, if somebody told me that if I had changed one thing in my life, I could have had everything I've ever wanted, everything I've ever dreamed of, I could have been in shape, I could have been taller. Um, I could have the best cars, I could have tons of money, I could have women hanging off me. But it would mean that I would never go through what I did, I would never meet my wife, I would never meet my girls, I would never meet my femboy. I'd tell you, nah. The only thing I wish in this relationship with right now is that I was younger. 
Oh, I was closer to my fanboy's age, at least, than anything else. Uh, but yeah, that's um, a very quick rundown of where I've been. Right now, my biggest concern is my weight and struggling to get it down. Uh, I need to fight harder. Today didn't help. Uh, today I went to see Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 2, and I am going to talk about it a little bit. There are going to be spoilers, and I'll let you know when the spoilers are going to start. I'm not going to start right away. Um, so, whenever I go to see a movie, I do the same thing. I get a couple bags of candy. Usually I get uh, Skittles and uh, Reese's Pieces. Well, this time I got a bag of Swedish Fish and Reese's Pieces because they didn't have Skittles. And I love Swedish fish anyways. It's my favorite candy in the world, period. Uh, yeah, so downing a bag of Skittles and Reese's Pieces uh, really doesn't help. I didn't eat much today anyways. I ate very, very little today. So it's not terrible, but it's not good, for sure. But I did see Guardians of the Galaxy. Uh, what do I think about it? This, the semi-spoiler-free version. Um, good movie. Worth seeing as good as the first movie? No. No, I don't even hesitate to say that. It's not as good as the first movie. Um, I think the reasoning behind that is the first movie had no expectations. There's zero expectations. It was basically a, a B team for Marvel that they were putting on the screen. It was a big risk. Everyone was curious about it. But there was no expectations for the movie to be good. In fact, a lot of people went in expecting the movie to suck. And... Yeah, well, it didn't. It was really good. But because nobody had expectations for it, everyone was expecting it to suck. Everyone went crazy over it. And the thing is, it was great. There were dark parts, there were funny parts. There, there were good parts in it um, that tugged at your heart, all kinds of things like that, you know. And in the end, there was a happy ending. In this one, they've upped the comedy in it a bit. I mean, they've they seriously upped the comedy in it a bit. I feel some plot lines were forced, uh, such as Gamora and uh, Nebula and their story which I'm not getting into yet. Uh, I feel that that was forced. That was severely accelerated. Um, I don't know why my nose is stuffing up, but it is. But in, in some of the darker parts, they injected comedy into it anyways. See, the thing about Guardians is when there were dark parts, when there were sad parts, they remain dark and sad. A lot of the dark, sad and serious moments in Guardians had a bit of comedy interjected into it anyways. And that kind of always made me a little... Eh. You know, let the serious parts be serious. Let the funny parts be fun. You can have a little comedy in, in the serious parts, but not as heavy-handed as they did. You know? Um, so anyways. Uh, Rocket, he definitely did not own it up in this movie like he did in the other one. Um, he just wasn't as... He just wasn't as engaging. As a matter of fact, the one who kind of stole the show was a surprise. It was a big surprise, the one who stole the show in this one. Uh, I'll get to that later. Uh, Drax. Uh, a lot more animated. A lot more talking. Uh, a lot less serious. A lot more evolved. Uh, definitely stole some scenes. Uh, Dave Bautista did a really good job with him uh, this time. I think it, he did a really good job. Uh, Gamora, eh, kind of stale. 
a little, a little, a little. She had some really nice badass seeds, but just you don't feel that same deadly assassinish feeling from her that you did the first one. Uh, Star Lord, not as quippy. Unfortunately, you know, little Groot was really cute. He was really cute. Little Groot, really cute. Little Groot, really cute. But yeah. again, because he was just a little Groot, he didn't have that much of an impact in the movie like he did the first one. He almost felt like a novelty character more than part of the team. Um, I felt a little disappointed at. Uh, I mean, it was interesting that the, the head villain they decided to put into the movie, but I felt a little disappointed at the choice. I don't know if that's the actual storyline of the comics or if they took liberties with it. Yeah, that movie you're hearing, by the way, that's Shay in his bed sleeping. We actually sleep with our computers on and our cameras, if we, you know, whoever has cameras. So one of my girls does, and I do. We leave our cameras on while we sleep, looking over us while we're sleeping. wants me to call when she gets home and we'll see about it. I'm not 100% sure because I'm with the other two. I don't know if I want to drop off from them to call her, but then again, I don't want to leave her alone either. We'll figure it out later. I, gotta, I want to finish this talk. And she knows I'm vlogging right now. Um, so... Uh, anyways, uh, is there anything else I can talk about spoiler free? No, I don't think so. So from this point on, uh, it's going to be spoilers for Guardians of the Galaxy. So if you're going to see Guardians, if you haven't seen it yet, from this point on, I'm going to count down to five. So when I hit one, it's going to be spoilers. Okay, so five, four, three, two, one, spoilers. All right, so, uh, for those of you still with me who have seen it or just don't care about spoilers, uh, the main villain of the movie is Ego. If you don't know who Ego is, he's a living planet. Uh, he, uh, they went into his backstory a little bit. In this, he was a celestial, and he formed a planet around him. And Ego's... Um, big plan is basically to destroy the universe and make the universe only him. Uh, he spent thousands and thousands of years planting extensions of himself on all habitable planets. But the problem is, is that he can't do this himself. It's beyond even the power of a celestial. So he's been trying to graft his DNA onto a different species in order to create a, another celestial and you know, hundreds of children never took his DNA but apparently Star-Lord had. Star-Lord is the son of Ego, the living planet, or he's the son of the celestial. Uh, I always thought that Star-Lord's father was different, that his father may have even been uh, Adam Warlock, otherwise known as him, uh, although Adam is teased for the next um, for Volume 3, which they didn't even tease about. They said the Guardians will be back at the end of the movie, so there's going to be a Part 3. Uh, but basically he needed two Celestials, so of course things are found out. And there are some things I don't even want to spoil, but I'm going to have to anyways. The whole thing comes down to as um, Star-Lord's mom did contract cancer from being around Ego. Ego actually put the tumor in her head to kill her because he was falling too much in love with her and she would have ruined his plans because he would never, because he would have returned to his planet uh, in order to regenerate the host body that he was using. So he ended up having to kill her and of course that just snapped Star-Lord. And the whole fight ensues where they go to destroy Ego. Um, 
The really sad part about the movie is, for as, as evolved as Drax had become as a character in the movie, he did very little other than the beginning. He, he fought very little, he did very little. In, in the fight with Ego, he, he wasn't even involved. He just kind of stood there for the most part. Um, same for Gamora and uh, Nebula. <laughs> really didn't do much. Um, the real uh, steal of the movie, the, the, the person that stole the movie, Yondu. Yeah, Yondu. The, the Ravager. His story through the whole thing, just, he's the one who captivated it. And he has some of the single most badass scenes in the movie. It is unbelievable. It's unbelievable. Um, and then, of course, he dies at the end, saving Star-Lord. Now, why did he save Star-Lord? Why did he sacrifice himself? He was redeeming himself. The reality is he didn't keep Star-Lord because he was thin or because he was, uh, you know, could squeeze into places for better stealing. He kept Star-Lord because he actually found out what Ego was and what Ego was doing. <laughs> I'll explain why I'm laughing in a minute. And that Ego was killing all the children that he had tried to graft his DNA to but didn't work. And so he refused to deliver uh, Ego he just, just refused to deliver Star Lord, Star Lord Eagle and decide to keep him and raise him as his own. And come to find out that Star Lord actually kind of really ended up loving. Um, Yondu ended up loving Star Lord. And in the end, uh, when he flies uh, Star Lord into space, um, he only has two, he has one spacesuit and one jetpack. So Star Lord uses the jetpack to carry um, Yondu uses the jetpack to carry Star Lord into the air into space, and then puts the spacesuit on him to keep him from dying, sacrificing his own life to do it. Um, and when he said in the end, he he says just before he dies, "Ego may have been your father, but he wasn't your dad." And you see the realization come over Star-Lord of what that means. And just as Star-Lord's realizing who he would consider his real dad, that's when Yondu dies. And it is the most heart-wrenching moment to see Star-Lord just start screaming as Yondu dies. And they kind of have a happy ending, but it's bittersweet. You know, Star-Lord was actually exiled from the Ravagers, but because of what he did, helping to destroy Ego, saving Star-Lord, saving the galaxy, the universe, uh, the Ravagers came and gave him a Ravager's funeral. And it kind of had a happy ending where everyone was kind of sewing things up. Rocket Raccoon was not endearing in, the, in, the, in this movie like he was the other one because he ratcheted up his asshole level to 12. Right? He, he went past 11, he went to 12. And they were trying to put him as kind of the loner, trying to always keep people away from him, never wanted anyone to get too close. And it was actually Yondu that broke through to him and made him understand. Uh... <laughs> the scene y'all do with Rocket Share in that movie, man. Oh, God. Uh, but anyways. Um, uh, yeah, because he ratcheted up his asshole level so much, it just kind of took away from his character. And, he, and he, even he wasn't really involved that much. They did a callback to landing a ship on the enemy, but instead of Rocket coming crashing through, it was Yondu who flew a small part of a ship that he has. Uh, on top of the, I'm going to say the Avatar, that was Ego. Um, the final scene, the final fight scene was actually pretty good. Again, they jacked up the comedy too much. 
uh, Star Lord is actually fighting Ego because Star Lord is celestial. He starts using his abilities to keep Ego busy in a fight while they try and kill him by placing a bomb where the brain is using Little Root. Um, settle down, Shay. Settle down. Um. And they start, and there's one scene where they're flying at each other, going for these big punches, yeah? And... Ego's avatar forms a big rock version of himself over his body. Well, Star-Lord forms a giant Pac-Man. Waka Waka sounds good. Waka 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 Waka, yeah. Yeah. This is what I mean. They, they've taken the serious parts of the movie and they're injecting comedy in it, and a very heavy-handed comedy that does not belong. You know what I'm saying? So, overall, it was a good movie. It had its good points, its bad points. Uh, but, it just wasn't as good as the first one. And like I said, I think the first one, there was no expectations for it. And because the first one done so great, everyone had high expectations for this one. And so put a lot more pressure on the people to try and recreate that magic. And instead, they went a little too hard and a little too heavy-handed. I don't think it was quite what it should have been. <sighs> Sorry, it's 3 in the morning. I'm doing this. But overall, enjoyable. I did go to see the 3D version. I paid $17. I don't care about paying $17 to go see a movie uh, if I think it's going to be good. Uh, and to me, it was worth it. I like the 3D experience. I like that the, the screen actually has depth to it. It's not just a flat screen where I'm seeing see the screen. It's, it's like the movie's playing in front of me. When somebody walks by a tree, that it looks like that tree's in front of me and just not on the screen. You know? I like 3D movies where they don't throw it in your face. There were a couple scenes where they did that, particularly with Yondu's arrow, where it comes straight at you. But for the most part, they kept the in-your-face 3D effects down, which I really like. I like when the 3D effects are used to just draw you into the movie more by making it look more realistic. You know, it's, it's more like you're there rather than, ooh, look what we can throw at you. And, oh. <sighs> so, would I recommend going to see it? Yeah. Would I recommend going to see it in 3D? If you can afford it, I would. Uh, but if not, it's not going to make that big a difference. But don't go in with the expectations of Guardians 1 because it's not. It's not as good as Guardians 1. Uh, but otherwise, oh yeah, the one thing I started laughing at, uh, apparently these ships do these jumps, uh, they can do these jumps, that's how they get around, and the jumps go through like, what looks like a grid, <laughs> and <laughs> Rocket in the, sh in the ship with Yondu and Yondu's first mate, they're the only three on the ship, oh, I think, I think Bruce with them. Yeah, so Groot's there. <laughs> and he's saying, What are you doing? Because Rocket sets a uh, navigation for Ego, straight up. This is, I'm going to save, uh, I'm going to save Star-Lord. They don't use a Star-Lord name. I'm going to save Star-Lord. He says, You know it's bad for the human body to do more than 50 jumps in a row. They go, yeah, I do. Well, we're about to do 700. And they start, boom, 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 boom. And as they start rapid fire jumping, their faces start to distort in all these ridiculous ways. Yondo's jaw comes down, just kind of goes, outward. I'm sorry, I know it was just a stupid practical effect and put in there to get a laugh, but it got a laugh. <laughs> it really did. It was funny. 
but there are five after scenes. There are five after scenes in the movie. Uh, the first one is Yondu's first mate trying to control Yondu's arrow, and he ends up accidentally stabbing Drax around the corner in his shoulder, and then he runs away. The second one, I think... I, I'm realizing I don't remember all five. I'm pretty sure one of them involved Gamora. But one of the ones is a teenage group, being a teenager, in his room with huge piles of leaves and vines. And Star-Lord comes in to yell at him, you got to clean up your room. I'm tired of tripping all the vines. And one of the funniest lines in the movie is Star-Lord's going, bickering at it with him back and forth. And then you hear Groot go, I am Groot. You know, kids, you know, kids. It was fucking hilarious. Was, oh, that was my Fen Fen dropping out of the call. She probably either auto dropped or she went to play uh, Overwatch with her friend. Uh, I was actually going to ask if I could come and listen in, but yeah. Uh, and then f uh, that was two. Oh yeah, one of the scenes, one of the very first scenes was a tease at Adam Warlock um, and his creation, which is nothing like the comics that I remember. But it's teased for him being in the next movie that Adam Warlock's going to be there. And Adam Warlock actually becomes, you know, Thanos' greatest uh, rival, his constant rival. And then, uh, that's three... I honestly forget the other two, but there is a total of five. Um, and then the movie ends. And overall, like I said, it's a really good movie, but it is not as good as the first one. Is there anything else really important I need to tell you guys? I don't think so. Like I said, this is probably going to become a vlog channel. I'll vlog every couple of days. I might put up some World of Tank footage if, as I play. Um, I don't know, maybe some Overwatch footage because I'm going to be playing Overwatch. Um, hopefully, going to get in with um, with Vana and her friend Mage, and maybe whoever else they play with. They get an Overwatch group. Uh, I wouldn't mind getting involved with them. We'll see in time. Otherwise, until I can get my computer upgraded, until I can get a new computer, this old girl, I love her so much. She, she has been. 100% perfect with me. Anything that's ever gone wrong with this computer has been my fault. Whatever's gone wrong with that computer has been my fault. It's not let me down on her own once. Knock on wood. And I love her for it. Stop, Cole. That was me. Oh, Bella. Sorry. Um, but it's time for something that can handle the games that are coming out. And I hate to replace her. But I really need to. So my, my girl needs to be changed. So that aside, um, I'm not going to be putting up much gaming footage anymore. Not so I can do that. And I'm looking to get a really high-end computer because I want something that will last for a while. That I can continue to upgrade again. So I'm actually looking to try and store away around three... Three thousand dollars, honestly, three thousand dollars. And if I can manage to put away five hundred dollars a paycheck, it'll be three months. Um, I don't know if I can do that. I can't do it starting this month. And June, the money I'm going to try and put away in June is going to be put towards getting my femboy out here from New York. I'm actually going to go up to his house in New York, stay the night, and then we're going to come back here the next day. He's going to stay here for hopefully about a week. And then I'm going to take him back to New York and then come home on my own. That's the plan. I'm a little nervous about that plan considering I have an SUV with 150,000 miles on it, but I think it'll be okay. So I want to put money away at least a little bit on my next check and in the beginning of June and the mid-June I want to try and put away between three to five hundred per 
And then when I go to get him, I want to get him mid-July so I can put some money away in July. I'm hoping to have somewhere around $1,000 to $1,500 to make the trip up there, bring him back twice, and have some money to spend while he's here. Take him to a movie, take him out to eat. Uh, we can sit around and game. That's fine. He's going to bring his computer. i got to set up a desk up here. i got to put a bed up here because I don't sleep in the bed. Um, I still sleep. I'll show you. Uh, yeah, in that. I do not lay down in it flat. This is a love seat. Um, no, I sit on this side here and recline back. I recline back um, and sleep in a reclining uh, area. And it's actually probably the most comfortable I've ever been in terms of a, uh, a bed. Honestly, I love it. Any bed I've ever laid in, I've gotten severe back pains from. Not this. So, I need to get some kind of mattress up here that him and I can lay on. Even if I don't stay laying on it for the night and I end up getting up into this, um, I want to be able to lay down with him. And just curl up a little. Because he tends to be prone to nightmares. Um, part of things that have happened to him growing up as well as his condition. So, I'm hoping that maybe while he's here with me for a week, that I'll be able to um, Hoping that at least the week he's here, because my presence will be behind him, I'll be curled up with him, that he won't have those nightmares. That's what I'm hoping. That maybe I can give him at least a week nightmare free. So, yeah. We'll see what happens. We'll see. But that's it, folks. An hour-long vlog for me. For all of you that stayed this long to listen to it, I really appreciate it. Uh, otherwise, this is one big bugger. I don't know where my channel's going or if it's going to go anywhere. But we'll see. Until next time, this is one big bugger. I'm signing out. See you guys next